Good evening, good evening, good evening. So let's try this again, guys. Um, so if it was on a couple of minutes ago, uh, we're just waiting for Dr. Madison to come on. She's just having a technical error with the phone, which happens. So we're just going to give it a few minutes. But while while I've got, I have you guys on, um, Dr. Madison, if you can just put in the comment section there, once you are sorted, you can just put a comment there. And so that I know. Hi, designer. Thank you for joining. So um, I just want to quickly go ahead and tell you guys about the, um, the, those of you who don't know, we've got a support group that runs. Um, we've got a support group now, we have it at the Cape Fertility Clinic. And then we also have the, the um, talk now at Genesis Fertility in Pretoria last night. And like I was just saying to everybody, like I just had the most amazing time with these women. Um, everyone shared their stories. Uh, everybody just, just the love and support that everyone gave each other was just so amazing. It was it was inspiring for me. It made me feel like this is why I do what I do. This is why I want to, you know, go on um, and, and, and do this because, um, because of, of the way these women just show each other love and support. And I think so many of them walked away feeling as if, you know, they're not alone, that there is hope. Um, and that was just amazing. So I think doctor is... Um, Doctor is, yeah, she just sent me an invite. Um, so I'm just going to send her. I said, okay, Candace Jane Willard, is is that who I'm inviting? If someone can just let me know. Um, Candace, can I, Yvette, I see Yvette has joined. Yvette, if you can just let me know if the invite is Candace Jane, send a request. Yeah, let me just do that. Go to my Madison, is it Dr. Madison? Um, okay, it is. Awesome. I've got the right one. <laughs> I was hoping, I'm hoping I'm not, I'm not actually inviting the wrong person. Um, thank you, Dr. Madison. Thank you. For having It's a pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, I, I'm actually sitting in the dark here. Um, so I've got load shedding at the home at the moment and that unfortunately is a problem with, with a lot of these things so a lot of women actually can't be on the live but quite a few on tonight and thank you guys for joining um but a lot can't join because of the load shedding but they watch it afterwards um <clears throat> hi everyone that's waving at me i was just telling everyone about this amazing support group we're running um <clears throat> and i hope that we could have it all over um because i think that this really does such a lot for these women. It makes them feel so much, um, so love and support, and it is hope, and they go away inspired, and, and women went away saying that, um, you know, they feel like they actually want to go for another try with IVF and that type of thing. So, yeah, I just thought I'd get that in. Hi, Dr. Mm -hmm. Madison. You are from Bain Lunch, Fertility Specialist at Bain Lunch. Thank you very much for joining, taking time to, to do this live. Um, one thing that actually came up last night is, equality you know so this is quite a, a, a good topic to talk about and especially for those that is dealing with with that's actually going through the IVF process at the moment um and so we've got quite a few questions for you um but before we start can i ask you to please introduce yourself tell everybody who you are where you're from what it is that you do um, thanks, Leanne. Um, it, my name is Candice Morrison, and I, I work in Stellenbosch um, at Veinland Fertility. I've been here for about seven and a half years, and um, I have two little boys, and, um, and fertility is just really near to my heart. And um, I was just listening to what you were saying about the support groups, and we'll touch on that later with, with, um, with equality, because chronic stress is a huge role so having that support group and going through it with others and feeling that you're not alone is is great for relieving stress as well yeah. awesome. awesome um so we're going to talk about equality and, and um oh wow let me just sorry let me i've actually got the wrong things open i'm i'm working in the dark here there we go so we're talking about low equality and one of the first questions is, what is the impact of your maternal age on the oocyte, am I saying it right, oocyte, oocyte quality? Yeah. Um, so 
the the the, the ovaries are we have to just quantify what is um low egg quality and what we what we refer to when we we say low egg quality is actually um the egg quality is the, the genetic normality so having yeah. a normal content of, of each cell and the ovaries just like we age we get wrinkles we lose um, bone density and muscle mass the, the ovaries are also incredibly sensitive to the effects yeah. of aging so because we're born with a number of eggs those eggs are with you for life and yeah. and they become less in time but they during that time they're sort of in limbo before you ovulate they're in yeah. a in a they're in a position um, and and so I've said they they feel the the effects of, of aging so the chromosomes instead of the chromosomes um, dividing properly you get problems with the little proteins holding them together and the spindle that helps them to separate so yeah. the age has probably the biggest effect on on egg quality and and the, the um, interesting thing if you if you look at the, the what the statistics say is that at 40 you have about 75 percent of your eggs are abnormal um, the chromosomes are abnormal. Wow. and that that rises up to about um, 90 percent at 42 and, and by 44 you only have about three percent of normal eggs so you can see that that age does have yeah. a massive role. Um, and so I've, you might... So I've never heard those numbers before. Yes. I've actually never heard those numbers, wow. Um, and so unfortunately we can't control, we can't change the genetics of the eggs, yeah. but can do things to change the environment in which the eggs are growing and, um, and yeah. you know, are developing in so we'll touch on that a bit later when we talk about the you know the lifestyle effects on on egg quality but the genetics what you want to do is try and and what we normally say in clinical practice is that if you are serious about having your own biological children you need to consider freezing your eggs around 35 yeah. so maternal age Age is just increasing because women are pursuing careers, marrying later, having children later, um, and so by the time that you are ready, your eggs unfortunately, you know, have that 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 age effect on them. So ideally, if you are planning on starting your family after thirty-five, um, yeah. and in having a, a family, you should consider freezing your eggs when you're around around thirty-five, and um, because between thirty-five. Even the the egg quality, we don't see a huge um, decrease, but from 38 on, definitely over 40, we see a very big, big um, impact on egg quality. So um, let's see, the next question we have is lifestyle and egg quality. Yeah. Um, so how does the, your lifestyle impact your egg quality? So again, lifestyle things are not going to change the genetics of the egg. They yes. can't change but they can improve the environment in which that embryo and that egg develop. And so I think lifestyle is often under um, underestimated what, what sort of effects it has on, on egg quality um, and, egg, and embryo development. So the number yeah. one, I think that any doctor working in the fertility center would say is stop smoking. So smoking, yeah. being, smoking cigarettes or marijuana all causes oxidative stress. Um, and that can... Yeah the chromosomes as well yeah. by causing changes in epigenetics and cause problems with the with the egg quality and and also decreases your chance of an IVF cycles um, working by about 50 percent so smoking has a massive impact on on your egg yeah. quality um, and then the other one is um, just diet so in general the having a BMI of over 30 then having a, and increases the risk of, of um, again creates a very there's a high oxidative stress um, and it's a very inflammatory environment for those eggs and the embryos yeah. so when we talk about diet we normally say a very prudent diet so following a Mediterranean type of diet so lots of fresh fruit and vegetables with nutrients try and ha even have meat free days sometimes red meat can also be inflammatory and um, yeah. limited to one and um, things like more fish and and the nice thing with the Mediterranean diet is it includes a lot of healthy fats which are also good so avo and olive oil and and those sort of things um yeah. al and alcohol is a toxin so often your body will focus if you're drinking a lot will focus on metabolizing the alcohol and not shunting blood to other areas so yeah. um some of the 
show that drinking more than four units in a week can also increase your chance of of um of poor quality eggs and and embryos so yeah. we through an IVF cycle just everything in moderation try and limit it to at to four and not huge goblet glasses of wine a unit yep. is a small small glass um and then exercise so exercise and lifestyle um so it, and i'm not talking about vigorous exercise because actually that mm -hmm. vigorous more than five hours a week can actually decrease your egg quality it also creates a lot of oxidative stress and inflammation so we normally talk when we speak about um, exercises moderate exercise so 30 minute walks five to six times a week or 30 minute training sessions five to six times a week um okay. you know and then just in toxins as well environmental toxins so i'm um, trying to limit yeah. exposure to bpa and plastic bottles and drinking out of okay. um plastic microwaving your food in plastic containers and um, as you this i think in infertility there's very little that you can control with the embryos yes. but your environment and your lifestyle factors you can control oh okay it's 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 i'm, I'm glad i'm doing this talk because i'm getting quite a, a, a new take on a lot of the things that you're saying that i've actually haven't heard which is quite great um and i'm glad what you're saying is that you can't change the quality of your egg at 40, for example, but you can just change the environment that that egg is growing in. Am I correct? Yeah. And I think and that, that's very really important that we have to focus on that and tell women because a lot of women think that, um, unfortunately, of they they get told that, oh, this, this product is going to actually change the eggs completely and make the eggs as, and, and we have to stress it out. We can just change the environment. Um, yes. They just need to, you know, do those certain things and lifestyle changes and so forth to assist with that. And I think that that's exactly we touch on. No, no supplement is going to change your your chromosomes of your eggs. So yes. uh, often we quite vulnerable if you if you really want to have a baby and you're a fertility patient, you're vulnerable to you'll try anything. And yeah. and sometimes too, too many supplements is also not a good thing. So yes, when yes, when yes. I, I it's I don't have a one um you know, one step for everyone approach to supplements. But generally I put everyone on folic acid and a prenatal vitamin. So that's just yeah. to prevent new defects. Um, and then everyone, we tailor it slightly differently. So if you've got polycystic ovaries, I'll probably put you on an inositol type of product to, to help with the egg quality. Um, if you are of advanced age, because we know that the mitochondria, um, which are the energy source of the egg as you get older, decrease, um, going on to something like coenzyme Q10, studies aren't, are, are conflicting, but it might have a, a role. And, and sometimes some patients... Yeah testosterone gel if they have um poor responders we might put them on tr testosterone gel before we we go ahead um yeah. if a patient is and doesn't want to stop or can't stop then i think it's important to put that patient onto antioxidants and a cheap form of antioxidant is just a, d a high dose of vitamin c or a dose of vitamin c is a good antioxidant yeah. okay. um to, just to mention some i've actually got some of these products on my website on fertility products, you can actually purchase it down. Um, you can actually purchase it um, on the site as well. Um, I'm, but I'm glad, very glad that you that you mentioned that. I never like to mention a specific thing like that is exactly what you must take. Um, and I like them to to like I mentioned last night as well. Always speak to your doctor first, and once your doctor decides and tells you what it is that you need, then purchase that product. Don't just purchase a whole lot of things. Um, someone said to me. Oh, they're taking about 12 vitamins at the moment, 12 different supplements at the moment. I'm like, that's too much. You can't actually take so much um, supplements. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about diet and egg quality. I think we actually touched on that now, the diet and egg quality side of things. Um, if there, is there anything else that you want to say about supplements to improve egg quality? Um, yeah, I think... Generally, it, it would just be to choose your supplement well. And I think don't yes. take everything if it's not necessary because too much of a good yeah. thing is bad. So um, I think, yeah. like you said, listen to and, and often we'll test things and, and supplement accordingly. But I don't think everyone needs to go on to, on to loads of, well, 12 supplements is too much. Yes, yes. absolutely. Okay, so um, this next question is, how do you tell if a patient has poor quality eggs? 
Uh, I think you can you can suspect that somebody has poor quality eggs if they're of advanced age and they're not falling pregnant. Um, but often we'll only know once we start an IVF cycle. So once we fertilize the egg, the first three days of the of the embryo development is driven by the egg, and then after yeah. that, the sperm. If we find that there's a lot of abnormalities, so um, different division patterns, the embryos are not dividing properly, um, or they just the division is very slow or slows down, then you can definitely suspect that there there is a poor egg quality. Um, but I think age yeah. and egg quality is is directly linked. Okay, um, I, I'm actually just looking at some of the questions we've got here. If you don't mind me asking this question. So one of the questions that came through is, what happens if you are past 40 years old and you did not freeze your eggs? I think you there are other options. So it's not that all your eggs are abnormal. And, and that's where yeah. IVF in is that you you know if you keep trying eventually, you might find the normal egg. And with IVF, because instead of just one, you're not getting just one. I think um, she's Girl. getting and then uh, there is um, in, you know that, that number, so the more eggs you have to choose from, the more likely are you that you're going to find that normal egg and create a normal embryo. So IVF does help because it just gives you more chances, really, if you are if you are collecting more eggs. And um, that's the one, one thing. And then the other is if. In, in patients of advanced age, we can also do genetic testing on that embryo. So we can biopsy yeah. the embryo on day five of development and send it away for genetic yeah. tests. We know that we're putting back the genetically normal one. So that can, in some patients, increase their time to pregnancy or decrease their time to pregnancy. Okay. Um, the next question is, can you conceive with poor quality eggs? You can conceive with poor quality eggs, um, but if the genetics are wrong, you've got a, a higher chance of miscarrying. So yeah. you might conceive, but you have a miscarriage at six or seven weeks if there's a chromosomal problem. So it's not, imp very often people do conceive, there is imp um, implantation, but then yeah. there's a higher chance of miscarriage. Okay, I've got one last question. Um, what do you think of Okay, someone just asked, what do you think of a low-carb and high-fat lifestyle? Um, I think anything that decreases the toxins, I think fat um, can be beneficial if it comes, you know, unsaturated fats and you're getting it from good avo and good sources. I think it, it could, um, you know, so anything that, it, that decreases inflammation in your body is going to be beneficial. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I've I had another question from one of the ladies that actually contacted me today, and she asked me a question with regards to um, she's she's 30, 33 or something, 33 or 34, and she's had two miscarriages. Um, and I said to her, I would ask this question to you. She's had two miscarriages, and obviously, once you've had a miscarriage the first time or the second time around, it's very you, you're very scared to actually go and you know for pregnant again, try and conceive again, and in the end ends up with miscarriage, is would her next step be to actually ask him to run certain tests um, before? I think in the, when, once you've had two or more, three or more miscarriages, we have to run, do a miscarriage screen because there's, it's not just poor quality or genetics that cause miscarriages, yeah. an autoimmune disease disease, thyroid dysfunction, lupus, um, or blood clotting disorder. So there's quite many yeah. things that could be causing the miscarriage. Sometimes it's a structural yeah. problem with the uterus. So once you've had two or more yeah. miscarriages, I think it is prudent to investigate and see so that you, this doesn't happen again. Because if, if the patient yeah. has things we can do, we can put them on the right treatment. Um, okay. And, and okay, so it's not... It's, it's um, the reason why I ask is because she's been told that you know, you've got to have three miscarriages before you can actually run those tests. Um, and, and that's a bit like she doesn't know what to do. So Tests are, in, they are expensive. Um, but many yeah. patients, you know, they would rather know and, and spend the money than, than this happens again. So, and yeah. I think sometimes in this hospital where the resources are, they have quite strict guidelines of, and usually it is three miscarriages and then you investigate. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, in, in private practice, if the patient wants to, and I think there's an indication if it's two or more miscarriages, we do start to investigate. Okay. I just, 
if, if you could just maybe just run through um, what we've spoken about now when it comes to low air quality. So somebody that's been told you've got, I've got low, you've got low air quality. So now you're going to be doing IVF. What would you say to the person if you could sum everything up? So I would say if, if they've got low air quality, I would look at the age. Um, so if they are advanced age, definitely um, IVF is, is probably the best option to find that normal embryo. And in the lead up to IVF, I would ask them to look at their lifestyle factors. Um, you know, if they look at the smoking, the toxins, exercise, diet, and look at their stress levels as well, because stress is also yeah. chronic inflammation. And um, high cortisol levels, and your body's in this flight or fight mode, um, also plays a yeah. role. So, I would say from her side, just to optimize everything that she can in her lifestyle. Um, but I think at 40 or over 40, IVF and getting good quality embryos is is the best option. Um, and and also that you know if you do IVF at 40 and there's embryos to freeze, you've got those embryos um, for a second pregnancy or third pregnancy yeah. if if you do get um, enough. Thank you very much, Dr. Morrison. I really appreciate um, you doing this talk with us. I'm sorry about the technical issues in the beginning, um, yeah. but it happens. We, we, can't, we can't control everything. No, thanks, so, Milian. Thank, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thanks, everybody. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to, to um, get hold of Dr. Morrison. She's at the Vein Line Fertility Clinic, Fertility Specialist there. If you could maybe just give your email address or contact details for Vein Line. Um, you can you can reach us at the Vainland website, www.vainlandfertility.co.za, or you can reach me on Candice Morrison at vainlandfertility.co.za. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Dr. Morrison. Have a great evening, and thanks everyone else that joined us this evening. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.